morning, beautiful people. Good morning, Backpack Blessees. Good morning, Sterling, Massachusetts. Good morning. The church has left the building. Welcome to First Church in Sterling, where we are gathered in the spirit of Jesus, committed to creating heaven on earth. Welcome to all who need a church home and to all who call this church home already. Welcome to people from all towns and cities and states and countries. Welcome to all who want to follow Christ, who have doubts, who do not believe. Welcome to people of all ages, races, abilities, nationalities, sexualities, and gender expressions. Welcome to single, to partnered, and to married people. Welcome to believers. Welcome to questioners. Welcome to questioning believers. Welcome to absolutely everyone. We welcome you to come as you are and to meet this God who challenges us to be more than we think we can be. We welcome you if you are not perfect, because certainly neither are we. And we know that the church at times has rejected difference and denied God's promise for itself and for others, which is why we say without reservation that you are welcome here just as God welcomes you as a beloved child. We are especially delighted to see you here if this is your first time with us or one of your first times with us, and we would love to invite you to have some cookies and lemonade and conversation immediately following this church service on the common. Um, and we would also love for you to go to our website at www.fcsterling.org and sign up for our mailing list so that we can communicate with you and learn more about you. I also want you to know that if you are new to us, you can set an, up an appointment with me at any time over the phone or in person. I love coffee. Um, you don't have to buy it for me. I can buy it myself, but I, I, I could even buy you a coffee and we could get together and talk a little bit more about what brought you to our church and find out a little bit more about what you are interested in and interested in knowing more about. Same is true of Pastor Zach, um, and especially true if you have children and teenagers and you want to learn more about that programming. He's a really good person to talk to about that. Um, today is our annual blessing of the backpacks, and we are so delighted to see so many kids who are still coming. Oh, look at them come. They're coming across the street to get their backpacks blessed. We are delighted you're all here. If you didn't bring a backpack today, but you are going back to school, we're going to bless your bodies, okay? So, and we will give you a blessing tag for your backpack so you can bring it home. So no worries if you didn't bring a backpack. You're still getting blessed. Um, and that goes for you as well, teachers. We're so delighted that you're here. We would love to bless you too. Homecoming Sunday is in two weeks, September 11th. We will be back inside in our sanctuary um, for worship. And then immediately following worship, we have a fair out here on the common. We will have a bouncy house. We will have food trucks or food of some sort. We will have food of some sort. We will have um, an opportunity fair for adults to learn uh, more about how you can get involved at First Church a little bit more deeply and intimately. Um, and we will have face painting and, I don't know, clowns and a circus and <laughs> everything you could yeah, possibly a want. There's a character, is there really? Yeah. There's a caricature artist coming? No clowns. No clowns. Sorry, I just scared Kristen. Kristen doesn't like clowns. There, there really isn't going to be a clown, but there is going to be a caricature artist, which is pretty cool. Um, let's see. There are many other opportunities for ministry and many events happening here at First Church. Please like us on Facebook if you haven't already, because a lot of our ministry during the week happens there virtually. Please also uh, sign up for our group on Facebook, First Church in Sterling, Mass, so that you can pray for each other and um, get to know each other a little bit more intimately there. And please see your bulletin and our email list for additional written announcements. And now we deepen into worship by saying together our affirmation of faith, which is printed in your bulletin. In the love, love of, of truth, truth and, and the, the spirit, spirit of Jesus, Jesus we, we unite for the worship of God and the service of humankind. Of When it's the night 
we would like to invite the children to uh, participate in this responsive reading with Eloisa. When it's the night before going to school and I'm picking out my clothes and making sure I have all my, all my school supplies. Love is with me. When I'm waking up and eating a healthy breakfast to start the day. Love is with me. When I meet my teachers and new friends in my class. Love is with me. When I'm praying at night and thanking God for my family, my friends, and my school. Love is with me. Please rise in body or in spirit and sing with us our opening hymn, Thou Art Worthy. Jesus was found in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. God, in a time of fear, of violence, denigration of public education, and incuriousness about our neighbors, help us to be like Jesus, lifelong learners open to wisdom. Give us the humility to see everyone we meet as our teachers. Let us listen for understanding. Give us the courage to question what we hear. Send your holy angels to stand guard and keep watch over all students and teachers. Let their names be always on our lips in prayer. Bless and keep them. Let your face shine upon them. Be gracious unto them. Lift up your countenance upon them and give them peace. We pray all this as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now, beloved, may the peace of God be always with you. And also with you. Thank you. Please turn and greet one another with a sign of Christ's peace.
We are going to take the prayer time in our service today to pray for those learning to do new things in new ways, which includes all of us. We are going to bless those who work in schools in support of teachers and students so that they have courage and peace. We will pray that we find new ways to reach out to one another with grace and forgiveness to balance painful realities with hope for the future. First, we will bless the students. So y'all come on over here. Come on. Y'all come on over here. See this big old space right here? All the students. All the students. Everybody with a backpack. Come on. Come on. Give them a round of applause. Students of all ages. Are there adult students? Hey, if you're going to grad school, Sophia Falavalito, you come on up. Sophia, get up here. Get thee forward to be blessed. All right. Katie's going to Divinity School. Oh, get get your butt up here. Yeah, (laughs) there we go. All right. This is going to be great. Okay, kids. So we want you all. Oh, all right. Here, let's, let's listen. We want you all to get off to a good start this year. As you go to school, we want you to know that your church loves you. Okay, everybody look at me so I know that you hear me. We want you to know that your church loves you and that we are praying for you, okay? And we're not just saying that, right, church? We're going to actually do it, okay? We're not just going to say that we pray for someone and not pray for them. We're going to actually pray for you. Um, Kids, we'd like to bless you and your backpacks and your school supplies to get you ready, okay? Does that sound good? Okay, so here we go. Students, um, you know, get your backpacks ready, okay, wherever you are. So go ahead and just, like, kind of hold out your backpacks in front of you. And we have some, some blessing tags that we'd like to give you. Um, so everyone, um, you know, in the, in the um, audience, I'd like for you to please um, turn your attention. Oh, yeah, sorry, the congregation, not audience. <laughs> turn your attention towards these students and imagine all the love and hope that is in you pouring out to our children. Children, look at, look turn around so that they can see you. So they can see your hold faces. Hold up your backpacks. Yeah, hold your backpacks way up high, okay? Be able to see them to bless them. <laughs> and we will bless these kids and hope that as they get ready to begin a new school year of learning, growing, and getting to know a little bit of God's wisdom, God's holy wisdom, God's Sophia, we're going to bless them. So now, um, look, kids, look at how much love this church has for you, Okay? And church, let's, let's pray for them. Gracious and loving God, we ask you to bless these backpacks and school supplies. Make them strong for their job of helping our kids learn. May their straps never break. Their padding never give out. Their zippers never jam. May they never be forgotten in strange places. May the burdens in them be light. And may the bodies that bear them be strong and growing and whole and blessed, ever blessed by your love. Ever-present God, bless these students as we send them out into a new school year as heaven builders. As they learn and grow and make friends, they are not just gaining the knowledge and skills they will need to help create heaven on earth someday. They are helping to create heaven right now. Amen. All right, children, you can sit down. As you go, stop by with Robin. She's got tags for you that you could use as bookmarks. They're new this year. You want a new one.
great. Can we have all the parents stand up? We won't make you come up here, but stand up if you're a parent. Rise up, parents of kids in school. Because we're going to bless you too. There's Chris. What's up, buddy? All right. For parents, loving God, bless every parent, grandparent, and caregiver of children, those who are tired, stressed, or just a mess. Give them calm, strength, and patient wisdom in the days ahead. Help them to teach the next generation to love what is just and good and true. As they pour out their love on the on the children in their care. Help them to know, help them to feel the streams of love and support from this community, refilling their reservoirs. Amen. Okay, parents, you may be seated. And teachers, we have not forgotten about you. Will all the teachers and people who work in schools please stand up? All schools, including colleges and daycares. God bless these teachers. For months they have labored and learned and adapted and worried and adapted again and stood up for themselves and their students and then adapted again. Help them to know that they are loved and appreciated. Give them the strength they need to be islands of certainty for students who feel lost on a raging river. Make them fountains of knowledge, creativity, and hope. Help them never forget that we are beside them, holding them up, and cheering them on. And for all of us, God, thank you for glue sticks and homework folders and crisp new notebooks waiting to be filled. Thank you for schools and libraries and teachers and laptops and Google. Thank you for the gift of curiosity and for your wisdom that is all around. Bless this time that it may be set apart as a holy time of learning, growth, and change for the better. Help us hold on to the knowledge that today's storms are watering tomorrow's gardens. All this we pray for love's sake. Amen. You may be seated. The reading from the gospel this morning is from Luke 14, verse 1 and verses 7 through 14. On one occasion, when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When they noticed how the guests chose, when he noticed how the guests chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. He said also to the one who had invited him, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed, because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. Let the church hear what the Spirit is saying. And a poem this morning, um, Humility, by Wendell Berry. If there are a chosen few, then I am not one of them. If an elect, well then, 
I have not been elected. I am, not, I am one who is knocking at the door. I am one whose foot is on the bottom rung. But I know that heaven's bottom rung is heaven, though the latter is standing on the earth where I work by day and at night sleep with my head upon a stone. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, O Lord, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and renew a right spirit within me create in me a clean heart oh God and renew a right spirit within me create in me a clean heart oh God and renew our right spirit within me. Amen. Will you pray with me? God, I ask you to be with me as I preach this morning and all of us as we listen for your holy word. In Jesus' name, amen. In Luke 14, Jesus gives some of the best advice that you could ever hear. It is just as relevant today as it was 2,000 years ago. It belongs in any mommy blog, any podcast about self-improvement. Uh, it sounds as fresh today as it did 2,000 years ago. Jesus said, those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Today's Bible lesson is about power, it's about authority, it's about place, it's about position, it's about class, it's about who stands where on the pecking order, where are you in the social ladder. Americans hate anything that reeks of class. Um, we as a nation were founded on the principles of the Enlightenment which says that each person is a king of their own castle. Each person is an individual and everyone is equal. And so we don't like to talk about class. We don't like to talk about social striation. We don't like to talk about um, some people being um, at a different level of authority or power than other people. We don't like to admit that that is true. Because we know that class is a construct. Um, remember a few weeks ago we said that most things are made up and don't matter. Um, Class is a construct, yes, and we recognize that it's a construct, but we can't do ourselves the disservice of not talking about it because we know that there are disparities and inequalities in our country around race, around gender, around sex, around sexual preference, gender identity, the list goes on, right? Those disparities exist, and we ignore power to our peril, if we don't recognize when there are disparities of power or authority, um, what usually ends up happening is someone just turning a blind eye to it, saying, I don't see race. Or everybody's equal, so why are we even talking about this? Right? Power, how you get it, and how to use it when you have it, is what Jesus is talking about in Luke 14. 
And there are two ways that Jesus says that you can get power, that you can increase your station, and that is ambition or elevation. And so we're going to talk about those things today, and hopefully I'm going to give you a couple of illustrations that show you what I'm talking about, ambition and elevation. Okay, so all those who exalt themselves will be humble. I was listening to a podcast with Matt Damon, and he was on the Ringer Podcast Network. It was a, a podcast called The Rewatchables. You can go and, and, and look this up. But they were talking to Matt Damon about his early movies. And in 1996, Goodwill Hunting was getting off the ground. And it was a small movie written by two people who had never written a movie before. They were still um, kids. They were, it was Matt Damon and Ben Affleck were in their early 20s when they wrote this, this movie, Goodwill Hunting. Universally now seen as one of the best movies ever. But they needed a heavy hitter. All right? They needed somebody who would elevate this movie. They needed somebody who was a high-class actor to come in and make people want to see this movie or else nobody would go see Ben Affleck and Matt Damon because they didn't know who they were. So they looked. Who were we going to get? And the director had a favor that he could call in, and who did he call in? Robin Daggum Williams. Okay, just to give you a sense of how big Robin Williams was in 1996, just start thinking about some Robin Williams movies before 1996. What do we got? Aladdin? Okay, he was the genie. What else do we got? Mrs. Doubtfire? Holy moly. All right, probably, okay, what else? We got a million. Birdcage? Good Morning Vietnam? Patch Adams? The Dead Poets Society? Are you kidding me? All right, if Robin Williams is in a movie in 1996, people are going to go see it. Guess what? They did. Matt Damon, though, said that in the little part of Boston that he's from, he was walking around with Robin Williams. Nobody knew who Matt Damon was at this point. And he said that in true Boston fashion, they were walking down the street. Robin Williams, Matt Damon, a woman leans out her window and she goes, I know you, Mork. Mork from Mork. Freaking Mork from freaking Mork. You think you're better than me? You think you're better than me. Here's the thing. Could you think of someone more famous than Robin Williams in 1996? It's a human tendency when we meet someone who intimidates us to say, what? Do you think you're better than me? Condescension from somebody in a lower station is always funny. Somebody not recognizing that the person they're talking to is very famous or very powerful is always funny. So I want to do a little illustration here. Logan said that he would do it. So Logan, come on up. Matt, would you be, I know you're in a boot. Could you hobble up here? This is even funnier because Matt's in a boot. I don't know why. Okay. I'm going to illustrate this. Now, you'll see this, this trope in any media that you can think of. Movies, kids' books, radio programs. You know, I'm going to call it big guy, little guy. Okay? Big guy, little guy. It doesn't have to be a guy. It could be a gal. But, you know, we got Matt here. Now, let's imagine that Matt and Logan are arguing. Okay. Now, Matt has experience. He's older, but you can also see there's a little bit of a size difference, right? Now, imagine that Logan is just getting angrier and angrier. So, Logan, kind of like ball your fist up. Okay. And when the little guy says, why I ought to, or do you know who I am? Or do you know who I am? Do you know who you're talking to? I'll kick your butt. That's always funny. Why? Because the little guy thinks that he's the big guy when he's not. Someone not understanding their place is always funny. Okay, you guys can sit down. So that's big guy, little guy. Okay? Robin Williams, just about the biggest guy that you could think of. Thanks for hobbling over. <laughs> Robin Williams, just about the biggest guy that you could have. The lady leans out her window and says, who do you think you are? You think you're better than me? Mork from Mork. Big guy, little guy. Someone not understanding their place is always funny. In today's Bible story, Jesus is at a religious leader's house on the Sabbath. And it says that he's looking at his fellow dinner guests, jostling 
for the most important place, the place of honor. And he sees it, and he thinks it looks pathetic. You have people in a lower place trying to elevate themselves by climbing the social ladder through ambition. They're trying to raise their station. And so Jesus gives us this amazing piece of advice. He says, when you go to a, to a party, don't take the best spot for yourself, but instead go to the lower spot. And then the leader of the party, the host, will come to you and say, my friend, why are you sitting here? Come and sit at this place. And he says, what you want to avoid is the opposite, which is that you, assuming that you are the big dog, go and you sit down at the best place at the table, and then the host has to come and say, hey, uh, my mother-in-law is supposed to be sitting there. <laughs> Don't climb, Jesus says. Don't be ambitious at the cost of your good name. Don't be ambitious at the cost of looking like the little guy who doesn't realize he's the little guy. In Texas, we would call this, don't get bigger than your britches. Because here's the thing, sometimes we think that we would do better if we were in charge, but then when we get to the place of being in charge, what happens? There's lots of details that we didn't realize went into leading something, and then pretty soon, we're stuck embarrassed because we don't know how to do it. We always think that we know more than we do. Jesus says, fight that tendency. Don't get bigger than your britches. Instead, humble yourself. Lower yourself. Look at where you are. Know your place. And then look below you and see, are there people who have less than me? Are there people who are served less efficiently than I am? Are there people whose needs are met less than mine? Don't climb, look down. Jesus says, humble yourself, look lower. And then he says, you know, if you throw a party, don't invite the fancy, rich, powerful people. Go out to the margins and find the people who are there. In Jesus' time, that was the lepers and the cripples, the blind, the poor. In our day, it might look different. We look at our station, we look below us. We say, who is it that is not receiving the benefits of the society that we receive? In our country, it could be people of color, it could be sexual minorities, it could be immigrants. Always look lower. And it's a radical thing to say, go out and find the blind and the poor and the cripple and the lame and those who are disadvantaged. But it's only radical when you aren't hanging out with those people anyway. If those people are your friends, then it's not radical to invite them over for dinner. So I think that instead of saying, like, go out and invite a bunch of strangers to your party, Jesus is saying the type of people that you would invite to your party are the people who are on the margins. Because that's the type of people you are when you follow me. I gave the example of big guy, little guy, and how, like, a little guy not knowing their place is always funny. But I'd like to give an example now of someone who was a big dog that... Uh, descended, and the magic that happened with that. There is an Israeli Orthodox Jew performer named Madis Yahu, and he had a hit song about 10 years ago called um, One Day. Do you guys know that song? Um, look him up later. He's, he's an Orthodox Jew. He dresses in full um, Orthodox dress, and he performs at festivals right next to Kanye and, and other um, pop artists. Um, but the song is, it says, one day there will be no war. One day we'll hold hands. One day. It's, it's a very positive, beautiful message. Modest Yahoo changed his appearance pretty dramatically when he left his faith. He shaved his face. He um, shaved his head and he wore street clothes. Normally people were used to seeing him in, in a suit, a full suit. And Modest Yahoo was in a coffee shop ordering coffee. And there was a performer playing the ukulele singing his song. And he starts to sing along. One day, one day, one day, yeah. And the guy kind of looks a little bit annoyed. Like if you've ever performed and somebody starts singing louder than you, it's not, the guy kind of gave him this look like, bro, like this is my, come on, like this is my time. But he keeps singing along. At the end, the, 
the guy kind of politely sets his ukulele aside and comes up and is like, hey, man, you, you sing really good. And Modest Yahoo goes, do you know who wrote that song? And the guy goes, of course, it's Modest Yahoo. And he goes, I'm Modest Yahoo. And the guy, like, collapses to the ground in shock. You can find the video on YouTube really easily if you look at Modest Yahoo, guy playing ukulele, it comes right up. But what makes this special, what makes this special is that Modest Yahoo was this guy's hero. This guy liked this guy's music so much that he learned how to play it on the ukulele, and then by some, like, miraculous, serendipitous condescension, this person comes down. And, and when you saw him, you would think it was like God in a burning bush or Christ in the manger. Like it was this, this elevated person who condescended down to us normal folks. And it was a beautiful moment. Modest Yahweh was really humble about it. But that's the type of thing that Jesus invites us to, to cross those lines and barriers of class, to say like, who are the people that I'm not supposed to hang out with? Who are the people that I'm not supposed to mix with? And then to cross those lines boldly, especially on behalf of the poor and the marginalized. So to bring this all home, Jesus tells us that we have to understand power and authority. We have to. We have to understand who wields it and why, and we have to understand our relationship to them. We ignore power at our peril. We want to say that everyone is equal, and that is true, but we have to fight to make sure that those equal rights are shared equally, and there's not disparity. Power, privilege, and authority are real, and they have real consequences in people's lives. And if we choose to use what power and authority we have to raise ourselves up through ambition, we're only ever serving ourselves. In fact, we're risking our own good name. But what Jesus says is a safer bet, is to look down and to say, who are those who are lower than me in society and what can I do to elevate them? What can I do so that I know them, so that it's not weird for me to invite them to my wedding? That is what Jesus calls us to. Jesus' advice is essentially this, be humble. Lift people up. Don't get too big for your britches. Because those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Amen. We will sing ourselves into a time of prayer now. Please join us as soon as you feel like you know this song. It's so easy. Somebody prayed for me, had me on their mind, took the time and prayed for me.
so glad they cried for me. And one more time, somebody prayed. Somebody prayed for me. Had me on their mind. Took the time and prayed for me. I'm so We take this time in our worship service to lift up the prayers of our people, and then our people are all of you. Um, we are going to pray for you if you have a prayer concern or joy that you would like to share. All you have to do is raise your hand, and I will come around with this microphone, I promise, even if you're very far away. <laughs> and after each petition, we will pray. I will say, God, in your grace and mercy, and you will say, hear our prayer. Please, won't you pray with me? Dear God, we humble ourselves every time we come to you, recognizing that we are so small and that your love is so big and can contain all the prayers of the world. Hear now your people in prayer. Beth. I have a uh, two-part prayer. The first part is prayers for my daughter and her partner, Nick, who are leaving... Um, about 10 days. They told me that a couple of days ago, but I don't want to keep track because <laughs> um, they're leaving for Arizona. So, um, so, so safe travels for them. And then I, the second part of the prayer, it's not really a prayer, but just to let you know, <clears throat> since they're going to Arizona um, today and next weekend, they're having a yard sale at my house, which is just four blocks up Maple Street. And there's lots of winter jackets sweatshirts and girls clothing even prom dresses do they still do proms yes, they do. <laughs> for coral and nick and traveling mercies god and your grace and mercy hear our prayer and uh prayers for a couple of friends of ours um, who have both lost um, loved ones in very tragic manners over the past week please keep them in your thoughts and prayers god and your grace and mercy Hear our prayer. Stoney, I got gotcha. you. Thank you. Uh, continued prayers for my sister-in-law, still battling a severe uh, seizure she had and slowly, slowly recovering. Thank all of you. For Stoney's sister-in-law, God, in your grace and mercy, hear our prayer. Do I see other hands? Oh, Kate. Welcome home. Thank you. Uh, so prayers for Matt, who actually tore his Achilles tendon playing soccer <laughs> this week. He's having surgery um, to repair next Friday, and then a really long recovery. It's going to be a tough one. Yeah. I'm so sorry, Matt. Does this mean you're going to be in church more because you won't have soccer? Yes. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. God, in your, well, let's all pray for Matt's healing. God, in your grace and mercy, hear our prayer. Okay. To those petitions, we add these. Curious and loving God, you make brave space for us to question, learn, and grow. We pray for teachers. May they know that we trust them to care for the sake and safety of our children, to help us raise them to be curious and compassionate, wise and resourceful. We pray for our children. May they know themselves to be brave and kind. May they be the kids in school who make room at their lunch tables, who share their pencils, and who stand up for the bullied and the outcast. God, we pray for our leaders in our church, in our communities, in our state, and in our nation, in our world. May we all make sound decisions and laws and policies that are for your glory and for the common good. We pray this morning for all those who are suffering with illnesses of the body, mind, and spirit. We pray for healing and hope. We pray for those who are mourning the loss of loved ones, deaths of relationships, 
the loss that always accompanies change. Please help us to make peace with yesterday and have an open mind and heart for today. Help us, O oh God, to be a blessing. Help us to see the good around us, the good in others, and the good in ourselves. Guide us into living like you, O oh God, with selflessness and love, keeping no record of wrongdoing. Help us to risk transformation because you love us with a divine love so incomprehensible we could never even grasp it. In the silence now, we lift up our prayers for healing and wholeness. We pray all this for love's sake. Amen. Beloved, now comes the time in our service when we share our tithes and offerings. And I wanted to leave you with a, a, a short reflection this morning. There are two ways to break a stone. The first is to swing the hammer. And if you swing the hammer against the stone, you may break your back before you break the stone. If you break it, it'll, it'll happen quickly. The second way to break the stone is with the steady dripping of water against the stone over many long and patient years. A German proverb says the constant dripping of water will break the stone. With giving, it's the same way. You know, we tend to think of fundraising as large gifts given by one wealthy person at one time. But our church, the way that we do it, is with that steady dripping of water, the planned giving, um, the giving that comes from sitting down at the breakfast table with your budget and looking to see how much you as a family can afford to give or as an individual can afford to give. But it's all of us together consistently in those small ways that will make the, our, our fundraising goals happen as a church. And so I invite you to give and to give intentionally. Don't swing the hammer. Uh, drip, drip, drip against the stone. And now we'll give and give generously.
Praise God for these gifts. Praise God most especially for these givers. May they be used for the coming of your kingdom. Amen. Please won't you join us in our final hymn. We are marching in the light of God. We won't sing the South African lyrics. We're just going to sing it in English. So it'll be nice and easy. You all know this song, right? Sing loud, y'all. Sing loud. Here we go. We are marching in the light of God. 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 gone longer <laughs> we could have kept that going it'd be 12 30 you guys would be like is pastor robin gonna stop adding verses no we love that song 
Hey, uh, hear this benediction, church. Don't be climbers. Don't let your ambition get in the way of your morals. Don't get too big for your britches. Always remember that those who humble themselves will be exalted, and those who exalt themselves will be humbled. Go to lift people up. Amen.